This is the Sonoff NS panel I began setting up in the last video. As you can see, I have tamed the beast, but it was about as easy as a NASA pre-flight inspection. The only difference is that NASA has fewer steps. There are tons of videos out there on how to do what I've done here, so I'm going to gloss over the minutiae and focus on what makes this work. Altogether, this process took about three hours or so. That's with searching for each next step because the article or video that I was using for the current step turned out to be out of date or inaccurate somehow. I could draw this out, but let me save some of you some time. If you're here asking the question, can I use this out of the box without using their app or a third-party service to connect to my other devices, the answer is no. If you're wondering if you can update it to work without the app without taking it apart, the answer is no. If you're wondering if it's as easy to flash as any other Sonoff device as shown in hundreds of other tech videos, the answer is sort of. Like I said before, each step I took was different in every source I found, but combining them seemed to work. I expect if I gave specific instructions on how to do this here, my video would simply be another one added to that list of eventually or circumstantially inaccurate sources. The things I installed, however, might still be of use to you if you're willing to do a bit of prodding and searching. There are a lot of UI packages you can install on this device, but I'll get to that in a moment. All of the solutions I researched and found to be reliable started with flashing the device with Tasmoda. I don't like having to do this at all, frankly, but I did it in my pursuit of an out-of-the-box touchscreen solution that doesn't require app registration or cloud connectivity to work. This installation is the result of a failure in that pursuit, but I digress. Flashing Tasmoda onto the device is fairly straightforward if you're a tinkerer and play with things like ESP32 chips, ARM SBCs, etc. The serial connection pins are clearly marked, and the stray pin marked 100 should be brought high by jumping your 3.3 volt lead to it as well. Then, you can use any number of flashing methods to back up your firmware and install Tasmoda. I'll leave a link to a few pages I used while installing all of this in the description. Once Tasmoda is installed, you'll need to install another package on the device to enable the screen to work. That package was created by another YouTuber and techie called Black Adder, who did a lot of seriously heavy lifting to sort out the communication protocol that makes this work, so respect. After you get that working, you'll probably want some way of customizing and controlling the screen, or in my case, make it as simple as a dashboard and Home Assistant to set up. Nearly. In order to accomplish this, I used Lovelace. This involves installing another package through the console of the Tasmoda device, as well as setting up some other things like MQTT and AppDemon on the Home Assistant machine. But you can read those steps if they apply to you in the links I provided in the description. Once everything is installed, the panel is now capable of using cards the same way the dashboard does, but with a few differences. Some cards aren't yet available, and a couple are named differently in the YAML file. You'll need to modify the app YAML file in the app daemon app folder, but you can copy-paste that code from other dashboard elements and then adjust the names if necessary. You can find all that in the Lovelace UI documentation below. If you're the type of person that gets this far, you'll have no trouble figuring the UI configuration out, I'm sure. I'm not going to say I like this device, but I don't dislike it either. I'll use it until one of the libraries is out of date and won't update itself without my help, then I'll throw it on a shelf to be a decoration because I don't want to have to maintain a dozen software libraries on various devices in order to keep my smart house working. That would be counterintuitive to the point of a smart house in the first place, which is to impress our friends by being better than them. I mean, save time and improve our comfort. This device does not do that. I don't mind it, but without modification, it's not helpful or impressive. And the worst part is that it isn't badly built, because it seems sturdy. It's really that its software is just an attempt at a forced brand loyalty that hinders its value. What happens when you sell your house? Is ripping out light switch panels becoming a new step of moving? Or are you waiting for the right buyer that isn't frightened by your weird lighting controls? These are all things to think about. I'm going to use this panel because I like the package, but I do not want to go through that installation again just to do what I can do with an old tablet or a Raspberry Pi with a touchscreen and with less functionality to boot. In summary, I'm still not a fan of Sonoff devices or Tasmoda. 
If Sonoff made their firmware like Shelly does, I'd be into their hardware because it seems robust enough, but they want to trap you in their proprietary ecosystem. As far as Tasmoda, I simply don't like that it's necessary in this case in the first place, and overall, I wish it didn't feel so disparate in Home Assistant. Otherwise, it does what it says it does. My search for a better out-of-the-box or close-enough touchscreen will continue. In the meantime, if you found this entertaining or informative in any way, I implore you to depress the like button with great force so YouTube doesn't start replacing me with voiceover-only stock footage documentaries or faceless tutorials on how to build your own generator out of aluminum foil and a single piece of wheat. I'm not sure what I'm doing in the next video, but I have a lot of projects planned or in progress that will surely involve something electronic and more than likely connected to my smart home in some way. Until then, thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building and exploring smarter circuits.